Amen, amen. This is the true worshiper. The title of this message today is The Den of Thieves. The Den of Thieves. I want to apologize to my subscribers. I did a video called Delivered Me and the volume was up too loud on the um, music with Donald Lawrence and the Tri-City Choir and Leandra Johnson song called Deliver Me so I apologize for that I got everything straightened out if we ever decide to do something like that again but um, I want to talk about these places that we are calling churches where believers and followers of Christ gather and when Jesus had entered the temple in Matthew 21 um, I believe it's verses 28 through 32 no 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 Matthew 21 starting at the 12th verse yes Jesus cleanses the temple and the reason why Jesus was turning over the was angry let's put it like this why he was angry and turning over the tables you know and tossing the money changers out and the people that were selling doves he was angry because his father's house this temple where people were gathering was supposed to be a place of prayer uh-huh and Jesus was extra angry because it was a place for the poor and the needy and the blind and the lame and the blind and the lame the poor they were not allowed to come in because of all this other stuff that was going on that had nothing to do with a place of prayer amen so I'm going to touch on some things and um, a lot of people that are listening it may deliver a lot and a lot of people that are listening are listening it may make you angry but that's okay that's all right if you get angry about what's about to be said what goes on what goes on in a a place that is no longer a place of worship what goes on in a place that is called a den of thieves is false religion false religion is worthless oh hold on before you correct me if you have your Bibles go to Jeremiah chapter 7 okay I want you to know that 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 term Jesus used that my father's house is to be a house of prayer but you have turned it into a den of thieves that was said in Jeremiah it was also said in Isaiah but in Jeremiah this is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord he tells Jeremiah he says stand at the gate of the Lord's house and there proclaim this message hear 
the word of the Lord, all you people of Judah, who come through these gates to worship the Lord. Do you hear me? I'm standing at the gates right here on YouTube. I'm standing at these gates and I'm going to say what I believe Jesus is saying in 2020. This is what the Lord Almighty says. The God of Israel says, Reform your ways and your actions, and I will let you live in this place. Do not trust in deceptive words and say, This is the temple of the Lord. The temple of the Lord. If you really change your ways and your actions, and deal with each other justly. If you do not oppress the alien. The fatherless. Or the widow. And do not shed innocent blood in this place. And if you do not follow other gods. To your own harm. Then I will let you live in this place. In the land I gave your forefathers. Forever and ever. But look, you are trusting in deceptive words that are worthless. When you steal, will you steal and murder, commit adultery and perjury, burn incense to Baal, and follow other gods you have not known? And then come and stand before me in this house which bears my name and say we are safe. Safe to do all these detestable things. Has this house which bears my name become a den of robbers to you? But I have been watching, declares the Lord. Did you hear? Did you hear that? Now, I want to talk about some deceptive words. Turn to Matthew chapter 21. And I'm going to start at the 12th verse. But let me tell you about these deceptive words that you are hearing in 2020, 2019, 2018, 1980, 1999. I want to talk about some deceptive words that's got you very afraid when you go to church. It has to do with tithes and offerings. Oh yes, oh yes, tithes and offering. Now you have been told that you are robbing God, but God has already told us why his house has been turned into a den of thieves. Uh-huh. And it has nothing to do with you, believer. You who are paying your tithes according to Malachi chapter 3. I want you to know something. Jesus Is the new covenant. And Jesus. Wants you to do something. With your money. 
with your offering. Now, if you want to believe that if you give your money to a man at the church, that says he's a pastor and he's a bishop and this and that and that you if you don't pay your tithes and offering God is not going to bless you this and that those are deceptive words I'm going to tell you how God will bless you when you do this with your money but first let me read something out of Matthew chapter 21 starting at the 12th verse and I'm going to get to that part because I know you want to be blessed with your tithes and offering but you've been deceived and you've been giving your money to a man and God is not getting none of it God's not getting that money from you God is not getting that money from you Woman of God, man of God, you who go to these places called churches, God is not getting that money. He's not getting it. Think about it. Don't be afraid. Because only a coward would not tell you the truth. I want you to be set free. Now if you want to give an offering. Because you've been blessed. By the musicians. The gospel singer. If you want to give an offering. Because that man. That stood up there. Or that woman that stood up there. Behind that podium. And preached the good news. And it encouraged you. And you want to give an offering? That's okay. Do that. But when you are told that you are robbing God in tithes and offering, in 2020, you're not robbing Him because you're not giving your money to that pastor. At St. John Missionary Baptist Church. Or at some Presbyterian church. No, you're not robbing God. You're not robbing God. Because you're not giving your money to that man. That man. That's preaching. And teaching. Because I see a lot of scriptures in the Bible where Jesus says, never again would you have to tell anybody to know the Lord. Because God himself is going to tell you and teach you himself. Amen. But let's read this. Matthew 21, starting at the 12th verse. Jesus entered the temple area and drove out all who were buying and selling there. They were selling doves. They were exchanging money because the people that were coming to the temple to make sacrifices they were coming to make sacrifices to bless our Heavenly Father. They were coming to make offerings which were burnt offerings. But the poor they didn't have any money. The poor didn't have any doves. And if you were blind or crippled, you weren't allowed to come in the temple. Listen to this. Jesus, he overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches 
of those selling doves. It is written, he said to them, my house will be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. The blind and the lame came to Jesus at the temple and he healed them. Amen. See, that's what happens in the house of prayer. You didn't hear anything about anybody paying tithes and offerings, did you? No, you didn't. But I'm, I told you, I'm going to get to you what you need to know. Now, in Matthew 21, at the 28th verse, For you who will believe, I want you to hear this. This is the parable of the two sons. Don't worry. I am going to get to that concerning your tithes and offerings. That 10% that you don't want to hold on to because you are afraid that you're robbing God. <clears throat> but check this out. Church doors are closed. Can't gather no more. A lot of preachers that have these buildings are upset. They're upset because <clears throat> these buildings that they call churches, they have been, the church has been a place of business. It hasn't been a place of prayer and worship and fellowship and discipleship raising you up to be a missionary and sending you out to witness in the name of Jesus it's been a business it's been a business so they're upset because the doors are closed one guy was telling his congregation when you get your stimulus check, give it to the Lord. But I guess he must be Jesus because he was telling them to sign that check over to him. And I guess he has access to God and you don't. And he's going to take your stimulus check and go to give it to Jesus personally. Yeah, right. Deceptive words. Don't be afraid no more. In the name of Jesus, I pray that you be delivered from that fear, from that lie. I don't care how many pastors you loved and have died and passed on and preached the gospel real good and told the truth. There's one thing in error about one thing. And they're in error about tithes and offerings. I said it. Now, I got the answer for it. And I feel very good about it. I feel that I believe, I don't feel, I believe the Holy Spirit is leading me to tell you the truth. And it's the truth that's going to set you free. Now, listen to this. Watch this. Matthew 21, starting at the 28th verse. What do you think? Jesus is teaching this parable. What do you think? There was a man who had two sons. He went to the first and said, Son, go and work today in the vineyard. I will not, he answered. But later he changed his mind and went. Then the father went to the other son and said the same thing. He answered, I will, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did what his father wanted? The first, they answered. Jesus said to them, I tell you the truth. The tax collectors and the prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God ahead of you. 
For John came to you to show you the way of righteousness. And you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes did. And even after you saw this, you did not repent and believe him. Woo! I know that there is a lot of sinners right now. A lot of sinners right now. A lot of believers right now. A lot of people who are lost right now. If you listening, you just heard something. You mean to tell me that the prostitutes and the extortioners are entering the kingdom of heaven before the self-righteous. Uh-huh. For the ones who are saying, yes, Lord, and don't do it. The ones that are standing in church every day with their hands up, speaking in tongues, saying, yes, Lord. But won't do what God say. But that prostitute, that gangbanger, that drug dealer, that sinner. Even that homosexual. Uh-huh. Even that confused person. Who are saying, uh-uh, I'm not going to do it. Jesus is asking them to do something. They said no. But turned around and did it and said yes. He asked them to stop doing a certain thing and repent. They said no and later repented and entered in. But the self-righteous, the so-called holy rollers, they say a yes in front of an audience. God told them to stop doing something. And they said, yes, Lord, but didn't stop. That's what happened in Jeremiah chapter 7. God told them to stop worshiping idols. Stop doing all these detestable things in my house. Like lying to people and telling people that they're robbing God if they don't give you 10% of their first fruits. But you wouldn't stop. You wouldn't stop. You kept going till you got that jet. You kept going till you got that stadium passed off, paid off. Now, you know what you can do with your mega church? You can fill that place up with a whole bunch of beds. Maybe even a place where you can cook and get all them people out of there that already know God. That's not poor. And bring the homeless in there. Oh yeah. We would love to give 10%. To keep them doors open. We would love. To pay our tithes to that. Hallelujah. We would love to do that. Because. Proverbs 19 and 17 says, He that gives to the poor lends to God. Okay, God is getting money now. God is getting them tithes now. Why? Because you're giving to the poor. 
Mm. I'm talking to all the pastors out there that have these buildings. Do what you got to do to get all them seats out of there. And put some beds in there. Bunk beds if you have to. Fill that place up. Put a kitchen in there. And a shower. If it holds 10,000 people. Mm, put the homeless in there. Put the blind in there. Put the, the cripple in there. Put those who are sick in there. Get them off the streets. Get them off the cold. Out the heat. Won't you do that? Do that. Use that jet that's paid off and, and, and fly them to go see their family for free. Do that. Because you don't need no more money for yourself. Because I'm going to tell you something, church, believers, that 10% that you have give that to the poor I got one more thing to say and then I'm going to give you these scriptures on what to do with your, with your tithes and offering watch this let's go to Matthew 22 this is the last verse starting at the 15th verse The Pharisees are trying to trap Jesus. Trying to tell him what to do with his money. Then the Pharisees went out and laid plans to trap him, Jesus, in his words. They sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians. Teacher, they said, we know you are a man of integrity. All right. And that you teach the way of God in accordance, in accordance with the truth. Jesus already know that these snakes are trying to be slick. You aren't swayed by men because you pay no attention to who they are. Tell us then, what is your opinion? Is it right to pay taxes to Caesar or not? But Jesus, knowing their evil intent, said, You hypocrites, why are you trying to trap me? Show me the coin used for paying the tax. They brought him a denarius. And he asked them, Whose portrait is this? And whose inscription? Caesar's, they replied. And then Jesus said to them, Then give to Caesar what is Caesar's, and give to God what is God's. When they heard this, they were amazed. So they left him and went away. Woo! Ain't that a blessing? Jesus, our Father. Now watch this. You want to know what to do with your 10%? If you really want your 10% to go to our Heavenly Father, the Creator of heaven and earth, if you really want it to be received by him, this is what you do. Proverbs 19 and 17 says this. Whoever is generous to the poor lends to the Lord and he will repay him for his deed. Acts 20 Verse 35 reads, In all things I have shown you that by working hard in this way, 
we must help the weak and remember the words of the Lord Jesus Christ how he himself said it is more blessed to give than to receive Hebrews 13 and 16 write it down so when they open the doors to these buildings that you call churches that you call your father's house Hebrews 13 and 16 says this do not neglect to do good and to share what you have for such sacrifices are pleasing to God 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 7 says each one must give as he has decided in his heart not reluctantly or under compulsion for God loves a cheerful giver 1 John 3 and 17 are you getting this? but if anyone has the world's goods and sees his brother in need yet closes his heart against him how does God's love abide in him Matthew 6 verses 1 through 4 beware of practicing your righteousness before other people in order to be seen by them for then you will have no reward from your father who is in heaven Thus, when you give to the needy, sound no trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may be praised by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret and your father who sees in secret will reward you you ain't got to tell everybody that you gave a hundred dollars to a homeless family you had a thousand dollars you gave ten percent of that you don't have to do that you can let your husband or your wife know y'all under the same roof this is where this money is going this is where our 10% is going to the poor to the needy Luke chapter 6 verse 38 says give and it will be given to you good measure pressed down shaken together running over will be put into your lap for with the measure you use it will be measured back to you see you're not getting nothing when you give it to that man at the church that man who is not poor now if that man has made a church building his business and he refused to work because he got all these people given to him paying his house note, paying his car note, buying him jets. Jesus said the poor is going to always be with us, but you won't give to the poor or he'll probably go buy some crack with it. Oh, I ain't giving him that. He's probably going to buy some alcohol with it. What do you think that rich man is doing? He didn't buy him a bottle of Dom Perignon for him and his wife's anniversary. Yes, he has. He didn't have a birthday party. He didn't give some of that money to their kids who are probably not saved and went to the dispensary and bought all kind of weed and getting high off your 10%. Come on now. Quit being a coward. Quit letting these men Scare you with the word of God. Take 
take a stand and say, I'm not doing this no more. I would rather face God in judgment before I give you another dime of my money and why I let my brother who was poor and my sister who was poor sitting out there on the street with no roof over their head. No food to eat. They don't even have a shower or a bathtub they can get into or a doggone toilet to use the restroom. And they're out there day in and day out and you are sitting up in the building with your furs on, your nice clothes and, and paying tithes for a position in church. You want to be recognized by this man, uh, Sister, Sister Sears. She's been a blessing. Y'all pray for her. Uh, he's mentioning your name because you all you didn't gave him about about a million dollars already. You've been there thirty years. You ain't gave the poor nothing. Proverbs twenty-two verse nine. Whoever has a bountiful eye will be blessed for his share. For he shares his bread. With the poor. Uh huh. Matthew 5, verse 42. Give to the one who begs from you, and do not refuse the one who would borrow from you. Deuteronomy 15, verses 7 through 11. If among you one of your brothers should become poor in any of your towns within your land, that the Lord your God has given you, you shall not harden your heart or shut your hand against your poor brother, but you shall open your hand to him and lend him sufficient for his need. Whatever it may be, take care, lest there be an unworthy thought in your heart, and you say, the seventh year, the year of release is near, and your eye look grudgingly on your poor brother, and you give him nothing. And you'll be guilty of sin. You shall give to him freely. And your heart shall not be grudging when you give to him. Because for this the Lord your God will bless you in all your work. And in all that you undertake. For there will never cease to be poor in the land. Therefore I command you. You shall open wide your hand to your brother. To the needy and to the poor in your land. Finally my last verse. Proverbs 14 verse 31. Whoever oppresses a poor man. Insults his maker. But he who is generous. To the needy. Honors him. Hallelujah. You know, there's a lot of scripture. I could go on and on. I've already used 38 minutes of your time. But let me tell you something. If Pastor Bushwick, if Pastor Bishop Bamboozle face was on your money, And it said, Pastor Bamboozle, then you need to give that to him. But also, you need to give to God what is God. And I just read to you scripture that tells you That the provisions that God has provided for you, the extra that you have, should be given to the poor. And we wouldn't have any poor in this land, says the Lord, if all of these believers and followers of Jesus Christ 
would give to the poor. Instead of giving to the pastor and bishops in these buildings that Jesus is calling a den of thieves. You know that it's a den of thieves because it's no longer a house of prayer. You sit down, you listen to a sermon, but before you even listen to a sermon, after people get done singing, they pass the offering plate around and tell you, well, it's time to give. And they read you that scripture out of Malachi. Mm -mm -mm. You can, they can read, they can read that all they want to. I'm not afraid. What I am afraid of is giving all my money to a church, to a den of thieves and robbers, and walking past human beings who don't have a place to live or food to eat. And I throw them a coin or a dollar and think I'm blessing the Lord. Nah. Brothers and sisters, it's time that you open the word of God and you need to learn for yourself. I've given you scripture. If you want God to receive 10% from you, give to the poor. Give it to the poor. Congregation, y'all 10,000 strong and all these mega churches, congreg that, congr that same congregation, why don't y'all come together? Put your money together and take a family off the street. Help the poor. Don't just give them food and keep them on the street. Give them shelter. I don't have a congregation. I'm not a part of a congregation. But I'm going to do my part with my 10%. That's what I do. I help the needy. With my 10%. And then I'll give over that 10%. Because there's so many poor people. I think I've talked enough. Amen. So don't be afraid. Don't you, don't you let these people trick you. Into buying them jets and paying their house notes. And keeping lights on in the building so you can come there and have lights on. You ain't got to come there. You can gather in your backyard where two or more are gathered in my name. There I am in the midst. Now since these doors are closed, that could be an out for you. It could be an out for you. I know you didn't became friends with your pastor. God knows you love him. But enough is enough because God is angry. You're giving to somebody who already has. You ain't giving the poor nothing. God is not receiving. You've been, you, you've been giving to these ministries for a very long time. And God is not receiving anything. He's not receiving anything. 
You ain't got to go through them. You can find out and find you a family in Africa or or Israel, wherever you got to find somebody. You can do that on your own. But what about the poor right here in your own backyard? People in Africa, they got wealthy people in Africa. Help those that are poor. You rich folks in Africa need to help the poor people in Africa. You rich folks in Israel need to help poor people in Israel. <clears throat> and you rich folks in the United States need to help the poor folks in the United States. And God <clears throat> will bless you. God will bless this country. I believe it. When he sees you doing that, hallelujah, he just may turn from his wrath. Amen. God bless you. See you next time.